Um, yeah, okay, so I've, <laughs> I've created a monster. <laughs> I've created an absolute monster. I'm really sorry that I brought this into existence. It's okay, I love you. You're fine. You're my first metahuman to mesh. He's got the hoodie attached, so <laughs> really scary. So you have a place in my heart, but I'm sorry, you are hideous and scary. So I got this, it said error while executing metahuman service, but then I just went on the metahuman creator website and launch the new Met Human Creator. And this was here waiting for me, <laughs> as if by magic. <laughs> so that's really, really scary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I brought you into existence. I'm just saying it's okay. We can do better next time. Can I give it some hair? Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. I'm starting to like this character actually. It's gotta be the <laughs> I love how I was looking around like pissed off. Pissed off, baby. Happy. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> now we can laugh together about it. He's a happy chappy. You can see, you can get more shapes out of better humans now, I guess. This is a cool being. Love great. So yeah, pretty awesome new feature from Unreal to do with the MetHumans. Uh, what it is, is you can just scan in your own meshes and sort of line up the eyes and the mouth and stuff to make your custom models fit into a MetHuman. And then you can put the skin on and you can like put the hair on and further customize it. I had a really funny journey through creating this MetHuman stuff and I learned quite a lot along the way. Um, so I thought I'd put this video out quickly to try and avoid other people coming across the same mistakes I did and just jump straight into getting the best results from this. You can even do a face scan of your own face and pretty much get yourself as a metahuman. This was my first attempt at scanning in my own face and then uh, fixing it up with the metahuman stuff and to be honest, doesn't look much like me, but it's cool to like create a brand new metahuman from your own geometry. So let's jump into it and I'll show you some, some stuff I worked out along the way. Go from scan or sculpt to fully rigged digital human in minutes. So you know what that means, blend shapes, the whole thing that's supposed to be really hard to make and do. Uh, this just seems to be wanting to do the blend shapes for you. I'm confused, I'm confused. <laughs> it's for real? It used to be that if you uh, wanted to give your character this kind of face movement that's driven by driven by live link face or something like that, you used to have to sculpt all of these yourself. You, you would sculpt all of these different faces and load them in for the blend shape data. So, so now I'm guessing the claim is that uh, you can do some custom models. Is this right? You can start with your own scan sculpted or modeled mesh and turn it into a fully rigged meta human, ready to animate in minutes. Okay. So the first thing you really want to make sure you do is uh, go edit plugins, find the meta human, new meta human plugin. Yeah, this one. You want to enable that. Uh, then, yeah, it's going to warn you about it being experimental and then it's going to make you restart. I would restart that and then what you want to do is check the library section of your Epic Games account here and go down to Quixel Bridge. You might have an update that needs to be done here. I think Bridge only registers the update once you've installed the MetaHuman plugin or something. Uh, and if that update isn't there, you might have problems down the line. So uh, if the update's not there, restart your computer and then see if it comes in there. You should install the MetaHuman plugin, then update Quixel Bridge. Uh, sorry, sorry, here. Um, and then you, everything should go smoothly down the line. So it has to export your MetaHuman to Bridge and to the MetaHuman project. So yeah, with those plugins enabled, you should be good to go. Sweet. I'm just going to go through the one that worked really well and then I'll show you some funny stuff that happened and some stuff to avoid. Uh, so uh, see how I imported this base mesh which is just a 3D photo scan. I did this one called Scandy, like candy but Scandy. And that's really good because you can decimate it in the app before you send it over to your computer. That's really nice. And then in Blender I just fixed the nose up a little bit. Could do a lot more modelling here. I just wanted to see what I could do with it really, you know. And then what I did was drag it in and pull it in. I'll show you the process with this. When you import a new one in, you want to make sure under mesh, you got advanced turned out, 12 down, and you go combine meshes, make sure that's ticked, then go import or import all, that's cool. And then once that's imported, you can double click this dude. Um, he might be looking quite strange. Mine was originally in upside down and the wrong way around, but easy way to fix that is 
uh, over here, you can just change this import rotation under import settings transform. And mine was 180 over here, and you get re import base mesh here, and that will flip it around. So that's a good little fix for that. You can also make the materials two sided, general kind of import stuff with importing stuff in general in Unreal. You gotta go by those practices. Then, what you do is you go right click and you go metahuman, metahuman identity. It's the first thing you wanna create. When you're naming your metahuman identity, this will be the name of the metahuman in the editor and in uh, when you, you know, in bridge and in everything when you go to import your metahuman so careful when you name this call it what you want to actually call it i had to call mine mh underscore because i'd already just imported it as me so you know call it steve or whatever your actual metahuman name is and then give it a double click and first thing you want to do is up here go components from mesh and find your bag mesh you imported in and yeah your mesh will be here and first thing you can do is go body type just set your body type i just did male all male so yeah you've done the body next up we do neutral pose and you want to change the camera uh, field of view so it's a bit more like flat so give it a 20. I think this camera is what it kind of bases it off of. It says to go 15 in the documentation, but I think 20 gives gives it a little bit more of an idea of the depth that's going on. I think you're more likely to get it to recognize the features if you go 20. And then position this in here. You want the top of the head inside the frame, go down to about the shoulders, fairly central. And you can either click down here or you can go up here, promote frame. Uh, so this, what this has done now, uh, it's made a new frame here, and you can call that face, face, front, uh, and lock that off. So we've made a new frame here, face front, and now we go track active frame. This is like the moment of truth, it's loading up the trackers. If you get the little green dots here, then you're in the money, you're golden, it's done the right thing. And I've been lucky enough to have some dots. It's looking very, very weird though. If the points don't come up automatically, you can click ear here and it will give you a guess of where the ear is and then you can edit that on top. So there we go, browse, make them active and then from that you can edit that. So that's really useful. If you're not getting the green dots coming up straight away, you can use that. So all you want to do is just drag these around. Okay, so if I left it like this, this is literally the shape of his lips. The shape of his lips would be, would be like over here. So, and the eyes would be all asymmetrical and stuff. So kind of got to draw this out, but we're very lucky that we've got the bulk of the bulk of the frame going on. That's really nice. And yeah, you can you can select multiple. Oh, I think yeah. Okay, so you can move that whole line like that. I didn't know that. That's cool. Or you can select like. Two of the dots will shift and move them both. So hold shift, then not hold shift. So you want the eyes fairly wide as well, because this is this is imagining that the eyes are wide open at this point. I've done a few of them where they've got droopy eyelids, and that's because I've made the eyes a bit too narrow. So making these curves fairly symmetrical, but you know, no face is symmetrical, so I'm not too fast. Just as a demo anyway, quick demo. Do this lit, I'll select all of these, bring all of that up select all of this whole kind of cleft bit. You see it's kind of selected this whole lip upper section which is cool. Bring that more central. So I'm going to leave it at that just for this demo. It's really really not central to all. Uh, but let's just see how it goes, you know. Um, another thing I would mention is you can create another frame. Um, I think down here, you can create a second frame, and this can be used for things like ears. So you go over here. Whoa, whoa. Uh, my ears aren't very good here, but um, we'll give that a go. Remote frame. Oh, so you know, call this side and track active frame see what happens okay it didn't it didn't like that one it's not made any orange green lines so i'm just gonna leave it at that for now i reckon it would have recognized that here if i if i did that correctly uh so i oh, just go here then press the minus take that one out We've got this one point of reference that will do so now that we've got the green things there the next one's opened up so we're just kind of going along this line make human identity solve nice one this will build the rest of the head and everything based off of this model. Now he's going to have an extra big forehead, guaranteed. Um, we got a template match, there we go. It's got both. There's Z fighting here, which is fine. We can 
let the camera out down here and we can see what it's built based off of let's, let's bring this field of view back up 45 and we can see what it's built it's looking better than my first attempt i think actually um it's actually done a bit better at not okay so the <laughs> forehead is still pretty big and stuff but it's looking good it's looking good i might have done the eyes a little too wide this time but yeah so there's the original mesh there's the new mesh. Now we go mesh to met human. So yeah, there's the error message. It says error while executing mesh to met human service. But I think that error message is an error in itself because if you go into met human creator, open it up, you actually should find that the models come in there. And lo and behold, <laughs> we have him. Looking amazing. Um, and believe it or not, actually went from something that looks quite a lot like this to something that looks like this. Just from playing with a bit, a few more of the MetHuman features. And I'll jump over and show you that as an example on this previous one. Show you how to like, how to make it look a bit more human. Um, okay, so yeah, once you've created your potentially a little bit strange MetHuman, you know, the likelihood is you might have some strange ears going on, you might have a strange forehead going on. Uh, you can use the kind of classic meta human features to kind of blend this with real humans a little bit more and make it look, look a bit more normal if you're going for that effect. So I'll get edit selected. I'll just turn this off for now because it's a little bit slow. Uh, you can do all the things like adding skin and adding hair colour and get really great with all this stuff. Just go skin assign. It's all pretty self-explanatory and it does bring your meta human to life quite quickly. Um, but I'll just show you some tricks I found to get from this quite weird result to something quite human looking. So we can see again just things to watch out for. See the eyelids here, maybe because I rush these a little bit. Got some quite strange eyelid shapes. Um, the eye width is actually pretty good. Good. So I, I would go go over similar eye width to what I put. Um, obviously the mesh I used was a, was a bit quick as well, so the nose could be could be refined a bit more. You want to make sure you get that all nice and smooth before you upload it to this. But overall, it's definitely something that's really good to work with. So. So let's fix this forehead. It's this blend tab. This is a classic Met Human thing where you can blend between these stock Met Humans. So you'll get a custom mesh enable editing. Uh, you can either make a new one with this or you can just use the one they're using. I'll do unlock only. And to start with, you can pick these areas and pull the region of influence down a bit. You can see this is just affecting whether the original mesh that you dragged in is having the effect or whether it's not affecting the kind of base meta human skeleton. This is sort of going back to base skeleton. So this is quite a good way to reduce the forehead size pretty quick. I might do it on the ears as well because I didn't really didn't really do the ears. So turn these into normal ears, you know. So yeah, that's a really good, really good one to start with. Just get it looking a bit more normal. Then once you've enabled that, you can now go to blend and you can drag in some other people that you think might kind of look like what you want it to look like. And then here, if you have this blend option checked, I think you need to use all three presets there. Yeah. So now, depending whether you go up, right or left, that depends who it's blending towards kind of thing. So yeah, you can use that as a good way to make some tweaks and, you know, you can do that all over the face. There's a lot of these different points of reference, which is really nice. <laughs> and then the other one would be like the sculpt and move tools really. And you just use those as normal. They can like, you can make your tweaks that way. Sculpt tool's nice, got all these little points you can work with. And yeah, really intuitively, you can quite quickly just make these adjustments. And yeah, that's sort of quickly how you might go and just like make it look a bit more human after you got the original scan in. But yeah, overall, that's sort of sort of what you can go ahead and do. I'm just going to show you some other funny stuff I discovered discovered along the way after this now. And uh, yeah, it should be something you get really creative with. Okay, so this process is like so quick and easy. I wanted to see just like. And this like revolu revolutionize this stuff. If I grab this Darth Maul head, and I then, is it gonna, one, is it gonna recognize that it's got these um, horns? And then can I just chuck the texture back in and then talk as Darth Maul's head? That'd be sick if that was possible. So let's see if we can do that with this new me mesh to meta human setup. Credit, all credit to the user, Fizzle, Fizzle A L H J B. Obviously, credit to Lucas Arts as well. Uh, this is not for profit; it's for educational purposes. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell. I'm not gonna resell this. I'm just gonna use it for this experiment just to see what's up. 
So I kind of thought I'd go and repeat this whole process once again, um, just to see if I could rip that model and and I kind of imagined just being able to like get a blend shaped version of this head. Uh, truth is, it was not that simple at all. Um, to, it didn't recognise the horns for one, annoyingly. So he just had a bald head when he came in. Then the texture was remade as well. So I had to remake the horns, reattach the horns, and uh, kind of do some really dodgy texture painting just for this example. When I did drag it in, I did manage to get talking as Darth Vader, but it was more like a man in a Darth Vader suit than the actual model I started with. But this shows some potential for sure. Shows that maybe if you, maybe if you, it's not instantaneous yet, but if you spend a bit of time, do some, still got to do some real work to sort of whip up a, a live link for face model or whatever you, whatever you want to make. Bonus is if you want to make some wacky stuff pretty quick, uh, it, you know it will it will reduce the time down instead of having to make blend shapes and stuff. It is expanding the amount of stuff we can work with with like live link for face stuff. So yeah, potential there, but there's still work to be done for sure. Yeah, so you can if you really want you can kind of be I'll let my horns are attached to this forehead. <laughs> Clearly, if you kind of want to quickly whip up a bit of something that looks like Darth Maul or looks like a man in a Darth Maul suit, then you can do that.